Hi guys, welcome to the Power DSP lessons. In today's lesson, we are going to see the inverse DFT. Forward DFT or simply DFT is used to convert the time domain samples into frequency domain samples. Inverse DFT is used to get the time domain samples from frequency domain samples. So it is the reverse process of DFT. Let's see the equation and the concept behind the inverse DFT in the next slides. Inverse DFT is given by the equation x of n is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k e power j 2 pi k n divided by n. x of n is the time domain samples and x of k is the frequency domain samples. We can expand e power j 2 pi k n divided by n using Euler's equation into rectangular form and it is given here cos 2 pi k n divided by n plus j sin 2 pi k n divided by n. x of k is the complex variable so we can expand it with real and imaginary parts which is given in the next line. We can further expand it by multiplying this term inside. After multiplying the j inside and rearranging the term, we get the final equation like this. Let's see what we can do with this big equation in the next example. Let's take a unity amplitude 1 8 cosine wave spectrum and see how to retrieve the time domain signal. The real part and the imaginary part of the spectrum is shown here. The imaginary part is 0 and the real part contains the positive and the negative frequency of amplitude 1 by 2 at 1 edge. Next we see how this positive and negative frequency contribute to the time domain signal in the next slide. This is the same expanded equation. Let's supply the values to this equation and see what is the output. Imaginary part is 0 so this term will vanish. Next, we can calculate the positive frequency contribution of the real part by supplying the amplitude 1 by 2 and positive frequency k. Similarly, the negative frequency contribution is calculated by supplying the amplitude 1 by 2 and negative frequency minus k. After simplifying, we get this term. Then by adding positive and negative frequency contribution, we get back the original time domain signal. Here this term will cancel and adding this we get the original time domain signal cos 2 pi k n divided by n. This is how the inverse DFT works on frequency domain complex values to retrieve the time domain signal by cancelling the imaginary components. Next let's take a unity amplitude sine wave spectrum and then reconstruct the time domain signal from it. This is the real and imaginary part of the spectrum. Real part is 0. Imaginary part is non-zero amplitude of 1 by 2 at minus 1 eighths and minus 1 by 2 at 1 eighths. Here, like the previous example, we are calculating the positive and the negative frequency contribution. The contribution is due to imaginary part only. Since real part of the spectrum is 0, so this term will vanish. After substituting and then simplifying, we get the positive and negative contributions. Then by adding, we get the time domain signal sin 2 pi k n divided by n. Okay guys, we have seen how the inverse DFT works using simple sin and cosine signal. Let's meet in the next lesson. Until then, bye bye.